الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ولي الأولين والآخرين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد أيها الإخوة in the previous lessons we were studying the pillars of Iman and we studied the meaning and the definition of Iman and then we spoke about the first pillar of Iman which is Al-Iman Billah Al-Iman in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and having Iman in his existence and having Iman in his Rububiyyah and having Iman in his Uruhiyyah and having Iman in the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and now we come to the second pillar of Iman which is Al-Imanu Bil Malaika Iman in the angels of Allah and of course Al-Imanu Bil Malaika the angels it requires you to have Iman because the angels are from a world which is unseen to us so had the angels walked in front of us there's no need to have iman because you can see the angels in front of you iman is required in iman is required in something which you cannot see in front of you same with jannah and Jahannam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the divine books and the messengers who came before us to the end of the pillars of Iman so who are the angels firstly what's the Arabic word for angels Malaika the Arabic word for angels is Malaika and Malaika is plural so the Mufrad of Malaika is Malak Malak is angel, Malaika is angels. And the angels, they are the messengers of Allah. They are Rasulullah. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has two types of messengers. Rusulun min al-bashar, messengers amongst humans who walk upon the earth. And Rusulun min al-sama, and messengers in the heavens. And they are the inhabitants of the heavens. And they are Al-Malal A'la. They are the inhabitants of the higher abode. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, and the eye is in front of you in Surah Fatir, Ja'ilil Malaikati Rusula. That he is the one who made the angels as messengers. But not messengers from amongst the humans, rather messengers from amongst the inhabitants of the heavens and the ulama they define the angels they say al malaika alamun ghaybi khalaqahumullah min nur la ya'suna allah ma amarahum wa yaf'aluna ma yu'marun the angels first of all alamun ghaybi Angels are from the world of the unseen. Al Malaika, Alamun Ghaybi, created beings, created beings from the world of the unseen. Khalaqahumullah min nur, and Allah created them from light. La ya'asun Allah ma amarahum, and they do not disobey Allah in that which He commanded them to do. وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ And they do that which they have been commanded to do. عَالَمٌ غَيْبِ Created beings from the unseen. خَلَقَهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ نُورُ Allah created them from light. They do not disobey Allah in that which they have been commanded, rather they do that which they have been commanded to do. So, alamun ghaybi, created beings, therefore we cannot worship them. Because they themselves are created. And amongst the mushrikun are those who used to worship 
the angels. In fact, even amongst the Christians today, they worship who they call the Holy Spirit. And they con consider the Holy Spirit to be Ilah, or to be a third of the three. And we believe that the angels are created beings, and we worship their creator, not the created beings. Secondly, Allah created them from light, as is mentioned in the authentic hadith. And so if the messengers of the heavens are made from light, and the messengers of the earth are made from water and clay, this shows us that the Prophet ﷺ was not created from light. Some of the people who have in Ahlul Khurafat, the people of innovation, said the Prophet ﷺ was made from light. It is the angels of the heavens, the messengers of the heavens which are made from light. As for Nabi ﷺ, say, I am a human like you. So how is he a human like us? Meaning in his creation. In his creation of blood and bones and muscle and hair and teeth. And when he was cut, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would bleed. And when he was cut, his cheekbone was cut. And, and, and when he did not have food, he would feel hunger and pain and happiness. Uh, and when his son Ibrahim passed away, he wept and his heart grieved. So he was a human like us, except that he was given a risala and he was given ayat and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected him from sins. And then there are four aspects that we must believe regarding the angels, meaning in order for our iman in the angels to be complete, we have to believe in the names of the angels and we have to believe in the descriptions of the angels and we have to believe in the actions or the responsibilities or the jobs of the angels and of course we have to believe in the existence of the angels. So we have to believe the angels exist and they have certain names and they have certain descriptions, yani physical descriptions, real physical descriptions attributes and then we have to believe in the responsibilities which Allah has entrusted those angels with. Now in each one of these things as Sheikh Ibn Uthameen says and the ulama mentioned that we have to believe in all of these things jumlatan wa tafsila meaning first we have to believe generally angels exist and then we have to believe specifically we have to believe specifically in every angel whom Allah specified that he exists we have to believe he exists so if for example a person said i believe angels exist in everything which has been mentioned in the quran i believe angels exist but i don't believe that an angel called mikael exists but i believe the angels exist in general so it's kufr why because you have rejected the Qur'an and the Sunnah. We have to believe in the existence of the angels jumlatan wa tafsila, that they exist generally and then each specific angel which Allah told us about from their names and their actions and their descriptions, specifically you have to believe that they exist. And the same with their names and with their descriptions and with their responsibilities. Now in terms of the existence of the angels, the existence of the angels is proven by the Sharia ah and it is proven by the Aqal. The existence of the angels, it is proven by the Sharia, ah, meaning authentic hadith, ayat of the Quran, and also it is proved by the Aqal. So, in terms of the Sharia, ah, then the ayat in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah An-Nisa, ayah number 136, Whoever disbelieves and rejects Allah, 
and his angels and his books and his messengers and the final day then this person has a strayed with great deviation in fact there is a surah in the quran which is known as surah al-malaika there is a surah in the quran which is known as surah al-malaika some of the mufassirun they mention that surah al-fatir which is i think the 36th i think it's the 36th ayah of the quran a surah of the quran um it is known surah al-fatir and some of the ulama mention it is known as surah al-malaika why because allah subhana began this 35th surah Allah subhanahu wa began this surah Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Fatir al-Samawati wal-Ard Ja'il al-Malaikati Rusula All praise is for Allah the one who created the heavens and the earth and he made the angels as messengers so some of the Mufassirun call this surah Surah Fatir and some of them call it Surah Al-Malaika because of the mention of the Malaika so this also proves the existence of the Malaika also the aql the aql proves the existence of the malaika and that is that if allah if we accept and believe that allah subhana created us humans and we believe that he created jinn and we believe that he created all sorts of plants and animals and birds fish kingdoms and he created animals which have become extinct and he created species which until this day are still being discovered. Until this day, there are birds and fish which are being discovered. And who knows until Yawm al Qiyamah which other species that Allah has hidden from us yet to be discovered by us in the future. So, Aqalan, if we accept the existence of and the creation of humans and jinns and plants and species and kingdoms, that we know of and we don't know of and they are amazing and wonderful then aql and the, lame, the same lord subhanahu wa ta'ala created the angels and as for when the angels were created we do not know except we know that they were created before the humans because we know in surah baqarah allah subhanahu wa tells us that he said to the angels وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً To the end of the ayat. And when your Lord said to the angels that I am going to create successes upon the earth, meaning Adam and Adam, those who come after them. So we know that the angels already existed before the humans. Uh, as a side point, Iblis was not a fallen angel as uh, some believe he's, he was not from the malaika rather he was from the jinn so the jinn also preceded the humans in terms of creation and as for the number of the angels Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that nobody knows the junood of your lord meaning the angels accept him so as for the number of the angels, we do not know the number of the angels, except that they are many, many more than we can fathom and imagine. Um, there are differences, there are distinct differences between the jinns and the humans and the angels. Distinct differences. So from amongst the differences is that humans, we have been created from Turab, and clay and water and the jinn have been created from smokeless fire and the angels have been created from light this is mentioned in a hadith we know that both humans and jinn have offspring they give birth and they have offspring as for angels they do not give birth they do not have have offspring they do not marry we know that amongst the humans and the jinn, there are males and females. <coughs> amongst the angels, we don't say male or female. We don't say male or female. 
And in fact, the mushrikun, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, they should consider the angels to be females, as if they are banatullah, as if they are the daughters of Allah, na'udhu billah. But we do not say they are males or females. Yes, in terms of the pronoun which is used to refer to them, the pronoun, hum, the male pronoun is used. But remember, in the Arabic language, this is a default, this is a default pronoun. So, the masculine pronoun does not always necessitate something being a physical male. Yani, uh, a house, we refer to it with a masculine pronoun. And we don't say that it, ha it has a, a, a gender. So this is just a def default pronoun which is used. Um, also, the g uh, humans and jinn, we have, we have a will and a choice, of course, under the supreme will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we have a will and a choice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, That we have shown man both paths. The path to good and the path to evil. And Allah has given us the choice and the ability and the will to choose good or to choose evil. And he sent messengers and books to teach us to choose the good and stay away from the evil. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed reward for those who choose good and punishment for those who choose evil. So all of this shows us that we have a choice to do good or to do evil. And everything is under the, is under the supreme will of Allah subhanahu As for the angels, لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم. They do not disobey Allah in that which He has commanded them to do. They cannot disobey Allah in that which He has commanded them to do. And this also shows us, therefore, that Iblis was not from the jinn, because the jinn can, uh, was not from the angels, because the malaika cannot disobey Allah, Jalla Jalalu. And we believe that the humans and the jinn, they live and they die. The angels, do they die? Uh, the ulama mentioned that there is some ikhtilaf with regards to the angels dying. We know that on Yawm al Qiyamah, the trumpet will be blown and everything will die. And that everything, halikun illa wajha, everything will be destroyed except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that which He wills to remain. So some of them said, that everything will pass away, except that which Allah wills to continue to live, that this exception, it includes some of the angels, like the gatekeepers of Jannah, the gatekeepers of Jahannam, and so on and so forth. Some of them said, no, this refers to Hurul Ain. I can say, this refers to Hurul Ain. As for the angels, they will also die. Also, other general evidences. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala It is Allah who is al hay the eternal living, who does not die. There is no other being except that it will die. And Allah knows best. Then after this, uh, what is Al-Bayt Al-Ma'mur? Al-Bayt Al-Ma'mur, as the Muslims amongst the humans, we have a Kaaba and we make a pilgrimage to the Kaaba, and we face the Kaaba, and this is the Qibla of the Muslims. Similarly, for the angels, there is a place which is above and parallel to the Kaaba above, of course, in the heavens. And this is a place which they visit in order to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Al-Bayt Al-Ma'mur is uh, taken from the hadith of Al Isra wal Mi'raj. That the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he ascended to the seven heavens, when he ascended to the seven heavens, and then he went to the seventh heaven, 
then he saw al bayt al ma'mur and in the hadith is that thumma rufi'a bi thumma rufi'a bi ila ila al bayt al ma'mur and then i was taken to al bayt al ma'mur wa idha huwa yadkhuluhu fi kulli yawmin 70000 and al bayt al ma'mur is visited every single day by 70000 angels la ya'uduna ilayhi ila yawm al qiyamah and those 70000 angels they come they worship allah and then they leave and they do not return the next day 70000 more angels come to bait al ma'mur to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then they leave and they never return and then another 70000 angels comes to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the beginning of the creation of the angels to yawm al qiyamah Every single day, 70,000 angels come just to worship and exalt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if this is the creation of the angels, 70,000 great, mighty angels of stature come to worship Allah. And they do not return. And every day a new 70,000 comes. And this is the greatest of their number. And their creation then how about the greatest of the one who created them and the one who is worshipped by them? وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهِ حَقَّ قَدْرِ They did not give Allah the correct estimation. His great, his, they did not exalt him as he ought to be exalted. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we mentioned that the angels, part of our iman in the angels is their names and their responsibilities. Remember, Jumlatan wa tafsila. So Jumlatan, meaning we believe angels have names. Generally speaking, we believe angels have names. And we believe that the angels were created for specific roles and responsibilities. And then specifically, we have to believe in the names which Allah told us of. And the roles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed of us of. As of. So amongst the names of the angels is the greatest angel, Jibreel alayhi salam. And his name is Jibreel or Jibra'il. Both of them are correct. You can say Jibreel or you can say Jibra'il. Both of them are correct. Or Ar-Ruh al-Amin or Ar-Ruh al-Qudus. All of these names are correct when referring to the greatest one amongst the, the angels. And he's the greatest of the angels, Jibreel alayhi salam. And what is the responsibility or the role of Jibreel alayhi salam? Naam. Naam al-wahi. Muwakkal bil-wahi. He has been entrusted with the revelation and he comes from, descends from the heavens to the earth in order to give the revelation to the prophets and the messengers. And also, there is Mikail. And there is Israfil. And these three angels, Jibreel, Jibrail, and Mikael and Israfil, they are the three greatest messengers, angels, yani messengers amongst the angels. So Jibreel and Mikael and Israel, they are the greatest amongst the angels, amongst the angels. And we know this because of the dua which I have written for you. This dua is from Dua al Istiftah. After you make the in the first rak'ah, before you begin Surah Al-Fatiha, what do we recite? Subhanakallahumma bihamdik wa tabarak asmak wa ta'ala jadduk. To the end of the dua. This dua is known as dua al-istiftah. And this is recited once in the salah, in the first rak'ah. And then, yani after takbirat al-ihram. And then it is not repeated again. Most of us have memorized just that one dua. 
However, there are a number of ad'iyah which a person should alternate in between. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, which we know. Allahumma ba'id bayni wa bayna khatayaya kama ba'id ta bayna al-mashriq wa al-maghrib to the end. And then also this one. Allahumma rabba Jibra'il wa Mika'il wa Israfil fatir al-samawati wal-ard alim al-ghaybi wa shahada anta tahkum bayna ibadika fi ma kanu fihi yakhtanifun ihdini li makhtulifa fihi min al-haqq bi-idhnik inna katahdi man tashai ila asrat al-mustaqim and the point is that we call out to Allah and we say Allahumma Rabba Jibra'il wa Mika'il wa Israfil and this shows us that they are the greatest angels because we call and we invoke Allah as being the Lord of the greatest angels and if he is the Lord of the greatest angels and he is their creator then anybody who is less than them of course he is their Lord and he is their creator So it's, it's appropriate that every Muslim, when he memorizes, we should memorize this dua. And when it comes to the, the ad'iyah of the Qur'an, uh, the ad'iyah of salah, you memorize it once and you never need to revise it again. Its revision is saying it in your salah. So does anybody amongst us ever need to revise Subhana Rabbi al-A'la? We don't need to. Because its revision is that we say it in the Salah every single day. Does anybody ever need to revise Surah Al-Fatiha? No. Because we say Surah Al-Fatiha every single day in the, in the Salah. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik wa tabaraka asmaq wa ta'ala jaddu at-tahiyyat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Wa Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. These ad'iyah, Subhan Rabbi al-Azim, Sami Allahu li min hamida, Allahumma rabbana wa lakal hamdu. We never revise them. Because the revision is in the Salah. Same with these Ad'iyah. So we said from the names of the angels is Jibra'il and Israel, uh, Israfil and Mikael. And these are the three greatest angels. As for Jibra'il, we said Muwakkil bil Wahi. He is the one who has been entrusted with revelation. And as for Mikael, then he has been entrusted with the rain and the wind. And as for Israfil, what's his job? Israfil, you know? Now, the blowing of the trumpets. And also, Al Munkar wal Nakir. And who are they? Al Munkar wal Nakir? In the grave. Munkar and Nakir are the two angels, as is in the hadith of Al-Bara ibn Azib, and they will ask each person, Man Rabbuk, wa Man Nabiyuk, wa Ma Dinuk. And there is also Malik al Maut. And Malik al Maut, his name is Malik al Maut. This is his name. His name is Malik al Maut. And he is the angel who has been entrusted with the taking of the souls. And also, there are angels who are Al-Kiram Al-Katiboon, those who write. And Al-Kiram Al-Katiboon, this is not their name, but this is their description. That they are noble, truthful messengers, uh, angels, and they are Katiboon, they record people's deeds. On the right and the left, the Hasanat and the Sayyat. So this is a responsibility which they have of recording the deeds. Both Mikal and Mikail, like Jibril and Jibrail. Both names are correct. Both names are mentioned. Yeah. And, and then there are other angels, um, yani names which are famous, but these names are, uh, have not been authentically narrated, even though they're famous amongst the tongues of the people, like Izrafil. They say Malak al Maut, his name is Izrafil. And there's no authentic, verified uh, evidence saying that this is his name. There's also the name Ridwan, and it's mentioned in some of the narrations that he is 
um, he's the gatekeeper of Jannah and his name is Ridwan. Allah knows best whether this is authentic or not. Khazin al Jannah. And then there are other angels who have responsibilities whose names we do not know, they have not been mentioned. So, for example, the angels of the night and the angels of the day who descend to the earth. And this is their job or their role. And also the angels, Sayyahun. Sayyahun meaning those who visit the earth. And they search for halq al dhikr They search for the gatherings of knowledge. And they lower their wings for the student of knowledge. Like in the, the, the hadith of uh, Abu Dhar uh, and others, Abu Darda and others, wa inna al malaika la tada' ajnihatiha ridan bi talab al ilm that the angels, they lower their wings out of pleasure and humbleness in front of the talib al-ilm. So this is also one of the responsibilities of the roles which Allah has created them to do. That your role is that you go around the earth and you find hilaq al-ilm, hilaq al-dhikr, gatherings of knowledge. And also there is uh, the angel who is the gatekeeper of uh, Jahannam. There are the angels who will carry the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they are eight in number. وَيَحْمِلُ عَرْشَ رَبِّكَ فَوْقَهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ ثَمَانِيَةٍ And they will carry the arsh of your Lord above them on that day and they will be eight in number. And there are angels whose job is to protect the earth and protect the heavens and angels who are being entrusted with the wind and the clouds and there, are, and there is the angel of the mountains remember the story of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam when he went to Ta'if and the people rejected his message and so an angel came down and he said Ana malakul jibal. I am the angel of the mountains and my job is to protect the mountains and, and your Lord has heard what your people said to you. And if you order me, I shall crush the people of Taif between these two mountains. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he did not want this. And he said that perhaps, min aslamihim qawmun wahda. That perhaps from their offspring will be people who worship Allah alone. And of course, as you know, there are angels who have been entrusted with the Masajid on Yawm al-Jum'ah. And they write down the reward of those people according to how early they come to the Jum'ah. And there are other angels who have been created just to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and exalt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also from the responsibilities or the roles of the angels is Shafa'ah. There will be angels who will intercede for the human beings on Yawm Al-Qiyamah and make dua for certain people, believers on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. So we know, as is in the uh, authentic hadith, that the angels, they seek forgiveness for the Talib Al-Ilm. They seek forgiveness for Mu'allim Al-Nas Al-Khayr, for the one who teaches people goodness. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَإِنَّ أَهْلَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ حَتَّى النَّمْلَةَ فِي جُحْرِهَا وَحَتَّى الْحُوتِ فِي الْبَحَرِ لَا يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى مُعَلِّمُ النَّاسِ الْخَيْرِ That the inhabitants of the heavens and the earth, meaning the angels, and even the ant in its hole, and the fish in the sea, it, يُصَلُّونَ, meaning they supplicate for the one who teaches people goodness. And also there are angels who make dua for those people who come early to the masjid and they sit on the first row. And they come early waiting for the salah. And the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, 
إِذَا دَخَلَ أَحَدُكُمُ الْمَسْجِدِ That whenever one of you enters into the masjid and he remains waiting for the masjid to salli al malaika alayhi the angels they continue seeking forgiveness for the one who is waiting for the salah ma dama fi majlisihi as long as he remains sitting waiting for this salah wa yaqulun and the angels continue to say allahumma aghfir lah oh allah forgive him allahumma arham oh allah have mercy upon him Allahumma tub alayhi, or Allah accept his repentance, the angels keep making this dua. And also those who pray in the first row. The Prophet said, Inna al malaika yusalluna ala saf al awwal. That the angels yusalluna ala, meaning they supplicate for those people who pray on the first row. And also there are angels who, if, as you know the hadith, if your Amin, it coincides with the Amin of the angels, then your sins are forgiven. In the hadith of Sahih Bukhari and Muslim, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِذَا أَمَّنَ الْإِيمَانِ فَأَمِّنُونَ When the Imam says Amin, then say Amin. فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ وَافَقَ تَأْمِينُهُ تَأْمِينَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ because the person whose Ameen coincides with the Ameen of the angels, then his previous sins are forgiven. I mean, great, great virtues, great forgiveness. For what? Salah, the first row, coming early to the masjid, praying on the right hand side, for seeking knowledge, for attending the gatherings of knowledge, for saying Ameen out loud. All of this is from the dua of the angels to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also, the, there are angels who make dua for the person who makes dua for his Muslim brother. بِذَهَرُ الْغَيْبِ But in his absence. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَا مِنْ مُسْلِمٍ يَدْعُوا لِأَخِيهِ بِذَهَرُ الْغَيْبِ that any Muslim who makes dua for his Muslim brother, but in his absence, he doesn't then tell him, oh, I make dua for you. No, in his absence. Then there is an angel who says, Amin to his dua, and also for you, maybe the similar reward. And why for the one specifically, who makes dua in, in the absence of his brother. Because this is complete ikhlas. Complete ikhlas. And he, you make dua for somebody, and he does not know that you have been making dua for him. And nobody knows that you've been making this dua. In your sujood, in your qiyam you're making dua for your Muslim brother, your Muslim sister. Whether it's from the ulama, or the salihin, or the muhsineen, or the imams of the masajid, and nobody knows what has caused you to make this dua, al-ikhlas, sincerity. Because there's no, there's no recognition, yani materialistically, for you making this dua. Nobody, only Allah subhana knows. This is why there's this great reward that the angel hears your dua, says ameen upon your dua, and then makes dua for you with the similar dua that you have made. And then we said that there are physical characteristics and descriptions regarding the angels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about these physical descriptions. And this shows us that the angels are physical beings. Physical meaning they are real, they exist. And as I said, that even logically we can prove this. So if, if a person says, but uh, and how do we know that the angels exist? If you believe that Allah created the humans and he created jinn and animals and birds and species which have been extinct, extinct and species which exist and we are not aware of and they are being discovered every day and species that we are yet to discover then logically Allah can also create the angels. 
So the first description is that they are made from light. Allah, uh, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Khuliqatil malaika nur. The angels were created from light. Wa khuliqal jan min marijin min nar. And the jinn, they were created from smokeless fire. Wa khuliqa adam mimma wusifa lakum. And Adam was created from that which has been described to you, meaning from clay from the earth. Minha khalaqnakum. From the earth we created you. Also, from the descriptions of the angels, that they are big, uh, mighty in stature. Allah subhanahu wa described them, Malaika ghilavun shidad, shadad. That they are big, powerful, mighty uh, angels. Meaning in their physical stature, they are much bigger and stronger than the humans. Also, we know that the angels have wings. And this is from Surah Fatir. Allah subhanahu wa said, Alhamdulillahi Fatir is samawati wal ard. All praises for Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Ja'ilil malaika rusula. The one who created the angels and made them messengers. He said, Uli ajniha. Mathna wa thalath wa ruba'a. Those who have wings, two, three, and four. Also from the descriptions of the angels is they do not eat, they do not drink, they do not marry, they do not have children. We don't say they are males or females. And saying that the angels are females we said that this was the aqidah of the mushrikun. Allah subhanahu wa said, when he described, when he was addressing the mushrikun, فَاسْتَفْتِهِمْ عَلِي رَبِّكَ الْبَنَاتِ وَلَهُمُ الْبَنُونَ So ask the mushrikun, the ones who used to bury their daughters, and they used to be ashamed at the birth of their daughters, that do you say that Allah has daughters mean angels, and you are only going to keep the sons? Do you know that we created angels as females? Did you see this? Rather, it is only lies which they say. Also, we believe that angels have hearts. We believe angels have hearts. We believe angels have minds. We believe angels have certain emotions like loving and fearing and hating. Angels love, and they love certain actions. They love people of righteousness. They love the talib al-ilm. They love those who come early to the masjid. And also they fear. And Allah subhanahu said, Hatta idha fuzzi'an qulubihim, qalu madha qala rabbukum, qalu al-haq, wa huwa al-aliyu al-kabir. حَتَّى إِذَا فُزِّ عَنْ قُلُوبِهِمْ Until when their hearts begin to tremble. And then they ask each other, what did your Lord say? قَالُوا الحق. They say, our Lord only spoke the truth. And he's Al-Ali, Al-Kabir. In Surah Saba. Ayah number uh, 23. Ayah number 23. Also, from the descriptions of the angels is Al-Haya, that they are very, very shy. Very shy. And this is taken from uh, the hadith regarding Uthman radiallahu an. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was sitting um, on the edge of a well. And he had his trousers rolled up to near his thighs. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu entered and he left his trousers like that. And then Umar radiallahu anhu entered and he left his trousers like that. And then Uthman radiallahu anhu entered and he lowered his trousers and he covered his knees. So they asked him, 
that Abu Bakr radiallahu entered, Umar entered, you did not lower your trousers. Uthman entered, and then you lowered your trousers. He said, Ala astahi, mimman yastahi, minhul malaika. Should I not be shy in front of the one whom even the angels are shy in front of? So this shows us also the, you know, the emotions of the angels in terms of feeling shy in front of the righteous people. Also, we know from the description of the angels that they speak. And when we say they speak, this therefore means they speak with a voice which is heard. Any voices and words and sounds and letters which are real and they are heard. Because this is what is qawl. Naam qala, when somebody says, then he says with speech. And speech is heard. And it consists of letters and words which are understood. A language which is spoken. This is what the Arabs understand by the word qawl. Qala. So that we know regarding the angels that they speak and it is a real speech with words and sounds and voices which are heard. And Allah subhanahu wa in the Quran in many ayat speaks of the conversation of the angels with Qara Rabbuka lil malaika inni ja'inu fil ardi khalifa qalu ataj'alu fiha man yufsilu fiha wa yasfiku al-dima wa nahnu nusabbihu bihamdika wa nuqaddis When Allah said to the angels that I'm going to create successes upon the earth and they replied to Allah, they said, so this, you know, this, will you create upon the earth the one who will create mischief and spill blood? And we are praising and glorifying you to the end of the ayat. Also, we know that the angels, Al-Munkar wa Naki, they will speak to the people in the grave and speak according to the language which the person understands. According to the language which the person understands. And also, how Jibreel alayhi salam came when he came in the form of a man. And he spoke with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And also, the angels, Allah has created them as being beautiful. And this is, wallahu a'lam, it's taken from, except, the, except those angels whom Allah has created to cause uh, fear in certain people but this is uh, taken from the fact you know, some of the ulama mentioned this that sometimes when people want to describe you know, beauty they describe oh, it's as if the person is an angel showing that the angels must be beautiful and this is taken from the statement of the, the, uh, the wife of the, of the king when she described Yusuf alayhi salam. She said, you know, when the other women, when they ended up cutting their hands, they said, ma hadha basharan in hadha illa malak kareem. Said like this, he's so handsome, Yusuf alayhi salam, he cannot be a human. He must be a noble angel. So this shows us that the angels are beautiful. And then finally, what are the benefits of having Iman the angels, meaning our Iman in the angels, how should it impact our behaviors? Because our Iman, it has to affect our behavior in some way. And we know that Iman is not just something in the heart. Iman is also our actions and our statements, meaning our behaviors. So what is the benefit or, 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 or the impact of having Iman in the angels uh, upon us. Firstly, Iman in the angels is a test whether we believe in Alimul Ghaib, which Allah informed us of. So if the angels were beings upon the earth, this wouldn't be a test. And does anybody amongst us deny the existence of, of mountains. No. Even if, and we never say, that, you know, the Quran speaks about mountains, an imanu bil jabal, you have to have iman in the mountain because the Quran speaks about mountains. There's no iman in the mountains because there are mountains in front of our eyes. There's no need for iman. The seas, the clouds, the rain, 
is mentioned in the Quran, we don't say that believing in the sea and the ocean and the clouds and the trees, this is from Iman, because it's mentioned in the Quran. No, because this is also seen in front of us. Muslims, non-Muslims, all of them, they know that they exist. But the angels and Jannah and Jahannam and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything which is from the unseen, all of it is a test whether we believe in the revelation which Allah has revealed. Also, from the benefits of the angels is that when we hear of their worship and how they submit to Allah and they tasbih and they takbir and they hamd of Allah and how they exalt Allah, that we also take them as an inspiration to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah is their Lord and He is our Lord. He is their creator and He is our creator. And if those great angels with such great physical creation, much greater than we are in terms of strength, if they submit to the command of Allah, then we who are much weaker in our creation have to submit to the command of Allah. Also, from the benefits in our behaviors in terms of having Iman in the angels, is that we fulfill those acts of worship that the Prophet told us that the angels, they, 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 they are happy and they make a dua and istighfar for those people who are doing those acts of worship. So for example, knowing that the angels lower their wings for the Talib al -in, its effect upon us is that we should seek knowledge. Hoping to gain the dua of the angels that Allah accepts the dua. And coming early to the masjid and sitting in the first saf and making dua for your Muslim brother in his absence and all of those other ibadat which I mentioned, one of the effects of this iman on our behaviors is that we do those acts of worship, hoping for the dua of the angels and the istighfar of the angels. Saying Ameen out and out aloud. Hoping for your I mean to coincide for the I mean of the, the angels visiting the sick because the angels seek forgiveness for a person who visits the, the sick. And so you do these actions. Uh, also staying away from those actions which are repulsive to the angels. We know that the angels do not enter the houses in which there are dogs. Akramakumullah. They do not enter into the houses in which there are pictures, in the pictures of, of uh, uh, animate beings, humans and animals. So therefore we stay away from these actions. Uh, also from the um, effects and the benefits of having Iman the angels is it increases us in our Iman of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created these great beings so much so that in Al Bayt al Ma'mur, as I mentioned, every single day 70,000 new angels come to worship Allah and they bow down in front of Allah in awe of Allah, exalting Him and mentioning his majesty out of fear of, of Allah subhanahu and then those 70,000 go away and another 70,000 come until Yawm al -Qiyama. Of course, this increases us in our Iman about the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And each time a person sees creation which is great, it should increase him in his Iman, in the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is where the mu'min has to differ from the kafir. The disbeliever, when it's a very hot day, his thinking and his contemplation, it never exceeds past just the weather. The Muslim is not like that. The Muslim, his tadabbur and his ta'amul in the ayat of Allah, it exceeds just creation 
and it transcends creation to thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And like this, the severe cold and the rain and the mountains and the angels and, and, and everything else that we see, we think about Allah subhanahu wa behind the greatness of that creation. He said, Subhana, inna fi khalqi samawati wal ard wa akhtilafi layli wal nahar la ayatin liyuli al albaab الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبه يتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار الله سبحانه said verily in the creation of the heavens and the earth and even the changing of the night and the day there are clear ayat clear signs for the people of intelligence those who when they see all of this يذكرون الله they remember Allah when they are standing. They remember Allah when they are sitting. They remember Allah when they are lying on their sides. And they ponder and contemplate over the creation of the heavens and earth. They say, Subhanak. They say, Oh Allah, how perfect you are. You did not create all of this for no reason. And for vanity. There's a purpose behind the creation of everything. Oh our Lord. Protect us from the punishment of the fire. So consider how the we knew the people of intelligence when they see aspects of creation from the dunya, they ask Allah to save them from the punishment of the hereafter. So when they see that which they can see in front of them, they think about the ghayb which they cannot see. And so they realize and appreciate the greatness of Allah because of the greatness of creation. In everything which Allah has created, there is an ayah. And this increases us in, and this is why the ulama say that there are two types of ayat. There are two types of signs. Ayatun shari'iyya wa ayatun kawniyya qadariyya. Ayat al Sharia, the ayat of the Quran, the ayat of Al Islam. And then there are physical ayat, physical signs. These are also proofs and evidences for us. Everything which we see around us from the creation of Allah, all of them are the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will suffice with this. Uh, of course, there are other aspects of the angels that people question that we don't know about. The people, they'll, they'll, they'll question minute details of the angels in terms of their creation and their looks. We don't know about these things because it is from ilm al -ghayb. So therefore a person has to remain silent about these matters. Yeah. And, and the angels. Yeah. So how far can we go? Uh, like, say we obey Allah and we choose to obey Allah, and then we say, are we better than the angels? Then? Yeah. Are the are the angels better or the humans better? Because yeah. for somebody to be you know, sinning and Allah to forgive that person and then um, enter into Jannah. But, you know, like, yeah, the angels, they, they continue to work. Because Allah created me. Uh, remind me of that question next time I come to you.